Welcome, folks, to the Speed Street Podcast. There is a lot to talk about. This is a... Whew, a lot has happened over the weekend. Uh, we had an IndyCar race that did not count for points. Uh, we saw some people uh, get some money. We, uh, we, we saw some uh, people get really angry uh, about these drivers winning money. And I want to start right off. Chase, welcome. Good to see you, brother. I have a very important statement. But first of all, I'd like to know how you are. I'm I'm doing well. I appreciate that. That makes me feel good. I'm uh, you know, coming off the same kind of a weekend, just watching watching some some IndyCar racing at Thermal Club, just trying to figure out some things, and uh, and and I'm definitely uh ready for you to to clear the air a bit. I I think that that is uh that that is much needed and do. So, folks, I want to start off. This is going to be a, a clippy, a clip part of the show because there was a statement that I had made. That was maybe a little bit, uh, I would say, slightly out of context, but uh, I, these words did exit my mouth. They did come out through my throat region and exit my mouth hole. Uh, and so Nathan Brown, uh, he put out a tweet. Now, if you didn't see it, thank God. Uh, but uh, a lot of people had a lot of problems with this. And, and to be fair, sadly, most of those people who have a problem with this probably will never listen to this show uh, because they already don't like me. But for those that maybe do, uh, I want to just I want to I want to understand what you were saying, how the responses came. So uh, let me read the quote that was that was headlining this article. That again, no one reads the article; they just read the quote. Bad take on my part. I admit, hey, this is not the right way to say it. But before I had said this, I had just got through reading so many people that are just flat out just throwing so much hatred at the IndyCar series for, I just, I don't know what that gets. I don't know where that gets you. It's very, very easy to just hate something. It's it's the easiest thing in the world to throw shade at someone, to just talk terrible about someone, because that's simple. And it make, maybe, maybe it makes you feel good. I don't know. Uh, it, it, that's definitely the easiest thing to do. Someone read me some wild, like, quote about how, like, easy it is to throw stones and, and to just, but whatever. So I said, no one's ever going to be fully happy, and some people are going to be angry with everything, which they are. But you got free racing to watch on Sunday, and if you're going to sit there and say, I don't want to watch it, that just means you're not a race fan. Now again, after reading that back, I text Nathan Brown. I was like, I don't know if I really enjoy the way that sounds, um, because in that same article, Christian Lundgaard had said that if his team gets an option, they're not even going to show up next year. Now, that's I feel like that's probably the more, that's a title. I put that out there. Um, but I, I, I got a lot of responses to that, and, and I just, I want to say that the internet, I, I, I do not like that I said that, because that's not true. Um, you know, race fans can, can have plenty of opinions. We, we respect everyone's opinions. We love that people support racing, but when you, it's my fault for just continuing to see, cause I like to do the research. And when I look at the internet and all people are saying is something negative, and I've seen it now for a couple weeks and so much of it honestly is really unjustified. Yes, you can have a problem with an event. That's fine. We have problems with it, too. You'll hear in our interview with Alex Pillow, like, he said some things to improve. But but you have a professional racing series to watch, which was doing something different, which there were good parts of it. And we were going to talk about all the bad parts, too. But I, I just, people got so, like, oh, Connor's out of touch. I'm like, you know, Connor, like, someone even said that, oh, we saw you. You were poor. You showed up in a broken Subaru to race at a race in... Barber and I was like, "What? Like now we're t- now we're calling me like some sort of uh, like poor person that like you should have never been there in the first place." I'm like, well, first of all, I am still poor. Second of all, I I don't know what like I I I just when you it's my fault for uh, seeing all of this stuff that gets thrown at me and letting it affect what I said publicly. Now again, I put myself in this position, right? We have a podcast. I, I get to race professionally for a living. I'm very very lucky to do that. I love this series with all of my heart. I I wish I saw that in more of the fans that that say that they support us because I just all people do is just hack this series down. I don't know why. Maybe it's fun. 
Maybe it is fun to do. Again, like I said earlier, it's easy to just hate something. It is. It's so simple. It's like, you know, it's there, there's so many things that people struggle with in life because it's easy. Now, it, it's hard. It's, it's hard to be like, all right, you know what? I know there were some tough moments about this weekend. But I got to watch 27 professional racing drivers try to make a race, something new, uh, go through a new qualifying format, which I thought was very exciting. Uh, a lot of people said that, you know, they, they couldn't get to the race. They didn't like the spectator situation. Um, and we're, and we're going to get to all that. But, but I just wanted to respond to that immediately. And again, I'm sure we can create a clip out of this. Producer Bobby can create a clip. That is my official response to being like, hey, I get that that statement was dumb. I, I should not have said that. That was a, a response. I was literally walking out of the track to head back to L.A. And I had just got through reading all these things that are coming after people that I had worked with all that week, all during the weekend, you know, social content wise. Why would you do this? You know, I just I, and, and again, there were tough parts. There were negative parts. But, um, I, you know, I'm I'm not criticizing our fan base, but if you look at it, it, it's just there is so much negativity. This is the first time, like NASCAR Twitter can be very dangerous. I've been a victim of NASCAR Twitter. F1 Twitter is a bunch of 17-year-olds who just are, hate everything uh, and, and love the idea of, of crushing people on the internet. But IndyCar Twitter, I thought IndyCar Twitter is normally actually pretty supportive. They, you know, I, There are plenty of people that hate me on the internet. That's fine. I'm never going to make everyone happy. But boy, IndyCar Twitter seemed like a wild place this weekend. It was it was very aggressive, um, coming after the series, coming after the teams for being there, coming after everybody. It's just like, man, I don't understand how you could hate something so much. Like, I just don't get it. I have a theory. Chase, a does theory. that make sense? <laughs> um, so I have a theory. So one thing, one thing's for sure. I know the internet. I do know the yeah. internet. We're familiar with it. I we know. Live there. I know NASCAR Twitter. Very well, yes. and okay. So uh, you, now you got to worry about F one fans telling you they're not seventeen. So be careful. <laughs> um, so I, I'm gonna say this much about it, though. I mean, even though yes, it may be this negative place. You said it's easy to be mean, right? It's easy to throw stones. I mean, that's that that goes across the web of all media, man. Like there of there course. are people that are gonna complain. It's like my mom always said. You know, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. So it's just, True. that's a tale as old as time. And you can't, you know, uh, uh, I, I guess in, in my mind, and this will definitely be bleep, so just be, just be sure, you got to become unfuckwittable. You become unfuckwittable, you move forward in life, and, and you don't, you, you kind of just have that, that focus, right? Because with change, with any type of change, anything new, there are people that are not okay with change. People get comfortable, yeah. they want things to be the same way they want to, and they also don't understand that you can basically just uh, prohibit growth that way when you get so bubbled, you know. So I think that IndyCar Twitter getting in a stir this weekend is actually the sign of a good thing. This is a good Agreed. thing. I was actually going to go into now that now we're myself. talking. Yeah, I was actually going to go into that myself because I, I responded to a lot of people all weekend long just to ask. And I had a lot of creative and 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 good interactions with people i'm like hey tell me why you think that and i, I think there was a, a lot of responses from folks that were like well you know I, I didn't like it because uh you know i felt like a lot of people just said it felt weird it felt gross i even had will buxton text me he's like i didn't like it it felt gross you know indycar like they're such great events for fans and i was like well that's good to know like i i i i appreciate people's opinions like no one is not allowed to have an opinion that's great but if you're purely built on trashing something, if something good happens, I do hope that you're brave enough to be like, hey, you know what? That was great. But it doesn't seem like anyone is. I see a lot of the same accounts just throw the same, like, missiles at IndyCar for no reason. Like, okay, yeah, there's some things that are bad. But, like, there are things that are bad about every single F1 weekend, every single NASCAR weekend. There's always that. But, like, why is it fun to make fun of IndyCar? Like, they're trying. They're trying. We're doing something new, um, and, and there's a lot to get into. So I have a couple things that I've screenshotted from people that, like, people offered some 
you know, some some constructive ideas, and I respect that. Um, but you know, let's just get into it right away. I I, I think I, I feel bad about the way it was perceived. I understand why it was perceived that way. You know, one of the things that we saw a lot was like, oh, it's only for the rich. Like, how dare you, you know, not make it, you know, viewable or attainable for fans. You know, no grandstands for fans to go watch. And I get that. Like, we love we love our fan base. Our fan base, it's, it's been one of the most enjoyable things in my career to interact with the IndyCar fan base and hopefully bring new fans, um, you know, to, to the sport. But, you know, I, I still don't understand that I mean unless unless you religiously go to all 17 races and this one was one that was you know it, it ruined your schedule like okay I understand that but you know if if I, if I can't go like like I can't go to every NASCAR race I can't go to every Formula One race but I'm I'm not mad about it I, I'm, I'm gonna watch it so I like I if you know if anything you get a better view on television anyway so I, I you know th- there's there's a lot there that you can enjoy by being a fan at a race yeah, and this a lot one, of people were mad about the. Uh, I, I think it was, and you're probably going to bring this up, but this was the, uh, the the talking about. It was like a a, a a expensive advertisement for Thermal Club. The yes. entire broadcast. That's a big one that I heard from a, a lot of big accounts. And people, and again, people definitely don't. You know, people definitely don't like to be made to feel like they're not able to attain something, right? Like, again, I'm never going to have a house at the Thermal Club, right? Like, I understand that that's not my tax bracket. I am never going to be allowed in there on a normal day, right? <laughs> like, that, I'm with you guys. Like, I, that's not my... I had some guy on a bus. I was trying to get to my car. He's like, oh, Connor, where's your property here? I was like, dude, I was six figures in debt till four years ago. Like, I, I don't make a... I don't... I've not made money doing this. Like, what are you talking... My first Perception year in IndyCar... is free. My first year in IndyCar, I mean, I didn't even make enough money to get taxed. Like, like that's not even like, what are we talking about? You know what I mean? So there's this that false shows you reality. though. If anything, that shows you right there. That that that's yeah. a good glimpse at what is going on. So again, there there's you know, I, I did feel bad for the folks that felt somehow personally offended by the fact that they couldn't go. I I, I, I do understand that, um, but. You know, th- this was an exhibition race. Uh, people also didn't realize like why I, there was just there was just a lot there. So I just wanted to talk about you know the the first thing was the 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 rich you know ah oh, this is just only for rich people thing. I understand that, I, I do. Um, but you know, if every one of our races was sold out, like if if, if every single race on our calendar was sold out. I would understand this a little bit more, but if 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 you if you can't go to this race, hey, that's a shame. And man, I, I do feel bad for our fans that do want to go to this event. But you've got others that you can go to as well. And, and now again, people don't like that opinion either because you're like, oh, well, that's you know, if if you can't go to this one, you go to another one. I get it, but it's sometimes it's hard to hear the truth too. Like, hey, if you can't go to this one, I understand that. That's tough. But guess what? We got a Milwaukee grandstand to fill. We got an Iowa grandstand to fill. We got all kinds of races across the Midwest that are not sold out that are probably much more reasonable to get to and very enjoyable to watch, probably even more enjoyable to watch than what Thermal would have been. Um, and more to do. So, and more to do. Yeah, so so that's my kind of that, – that's, that's how I, I would view it. And, again, I'm trying to be positive about it. I know that it's tough to be like say, hey, like I can't go unless you have a bunch of money. That sucks. I get it, but but there's more races to go to. You know what I mean? Like that there is more, and 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 if we, you know, there's a lot of people that didn't like that I said, um, you know, there's 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 a, there's a re- like people thought I was blaming the fans. I'm not blaming the fans. I'm giving you options. We should have gone to Texas maybe to keep it around. You know what I mean? Like we should have gone to all these places. Like I I I I would I just I just wanted to let people know like hey. You know, it's easy to, as I said again, this is going to be the theme of the show. Like, it's so easy to throw shade, but like, let's just figure out what we can do. And 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 IndyCar is trying. There are people that are employed. They wake up every day with the love of the sport that we have, that I have, um, that want to make it better. And we're trying. We really are trying. So there was a lot there. Now, Chase, we had we have a list as well of pros and cons from this weekend. I, I made a list of three pros and three cons that we can get into. Um, but I want to read first, 
uh, I want to read a tweet that uh, that Crash Gladys that she 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 sent in to me from the Speed Freaks show. I don't know if you guys listen to Speed Freaks. It's a, good, it's a great program. Crash Gladys. She's been around racing a long time. I asked, hey, because she was she didn't like she did not like it. She was not throwing any positive things out there, which is fine. Again, opinions. But I'd like to read this. I said, hey, wh- what would you what would you like to do to you know to see it be better? Now, Chase, let me know what you think of this. Regarding making it more massive, like massive of, a, of an event, open up Victory Lane, create a party atmosphere there, use social media better for flashy promos the entire week leading up to the event, literally hammer social media, create curiosity in newbies and longstanders alike. There was also zero pomp and circumstance pre-race. That should always be a no-brainer, like going large. Okay, let's get to the first thing of Victory Lane, because I also have... Probably something interesting to share about the IndyCar social accounts. The race technically, I mean, the race was not a spectator event, right? Like, there was a very limited number of spectators. So, opening up Victory Lane, that, to who? <laughs> like, to all the rich people that are in there, you know, that, that, that are in their wonderful apartments, like, enjoying that. So, like, I, and again, that sounds terrible, but that that's not what it was for. I think we should open up Victory Lane at every other track that we go to. I completely agree with that. But for this one, uh, I just I just don't see how that was possible because there might have been a, you know a thousand people there, right? When it comes to like normal spectators, uh, pe- people that bought tickets to be there, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I don't understand that one. Uh, and then hammer it on social media. So if you go to IndyCar's Instagram account, there are. Many, many posts about this event. Uh, if anything, a ton. So I, I don't, I don't really understand that one. Uh, I'm just going to count on this grid. On this grid here, I see uh, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see, I see thirteen posts. In just this 10 seconds that I've looked at it leading up to the thermal weekend. So, I, so I, I, don't, I don't know what people are missing there. I, I don't understand that. Like, if we're just looking at the facts, there is a ton of social content coming from the IndyCar channels. Now, again, do they need to be hiring other people? Maybe. But that was, that was kind of my re- response to that one. Uh, I, I, would, I would completely agree with the pre-race. That was a bit odd. Uh, Again, hard to make it look pump and circumstancy. Uh, you know, you had John Elway there. That was cool. I saw John Elway. Uh, a couple different celebrities Shout were there. John. That's great. I, I think their pre race could have been better for sure. But uh, but does that make sense, Chase? Is, that, is that those kind of responses kind of make sense in that case? I want to know what you thought about that tweet too. So uh, you know, I took I took a lot of time to think about it because I know when we talked, you know, we talked about making pros and cons, and I think the big thing for me especially with that tweet is like she's definitely on to something with the making it kind of like an event thing like i think snake pit right you think yes. indy 500 you think snake pit you think how they have that like you know a lot of people go to burning man you know maybe there's some room for some it's a desert so it's got that vibe to it maybe there's some room to do something like that you get a little music festival thing going on in there because yeah, whatever it takes, really, right? Like, I mean, for me personally, that's where I, that's the direction I'd want to go with it. Is definitely go music festival, do something where like there's canopy tents, whatever, and <laughs> you know, and then if you need to have it to where it's not too crazy for the people that own homes and stuff like that, you got to figure out a way to get everybody on board, um, or you need to to maybe really rethink about where this is being held because agree, from yeah, the outside I, I don't looking know if this in, is the right place for it. I, I, I do I do agree that I, I like the Thermal Club. They're going to be on my race suit for the Indy 500. Like, great people out there, and I love the facility. But but for our for our racing, I, I do believe that a, a mile-and-a-half oval would probably be better, someplace where you could have this party atmosphere for type of an all-star mm-hmm. type of event. I do agree. I, I think it needs to be somewhere else. I like that oval talk you got going on right there yep. because that's, I mean, that's that's honestly, like, when I think all-star race, I mean, yeah, like, there's only one type of all-star race I really know. You know, so I mean, I, I I like I just love Indy cars on ovals, so I I think that that could be a really great uh, addition to it. But aside from that, I mean, the, a lot of people talk about how they were you know kind of like copying some of the F one sprint race 
kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I didn't really understand that one. I, I, I yeah, I, I didn't understand that one honestly, because because like no one uh, likes uh, the F one sprint races. I don't think so. I, I, no, I that was it. That showed yeah. the out of t- it. Showed, kind of showed some out of touchness a little bit, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Because if anything, I'm just thinking like, okay, these are ideas that were put together as is you know in a way that they thought would work or that thought would would be very highly received, but you just had your typical kind of pushback, especially as we got closer to the event with the amount of people that could be there, things like that. And it's over now. There's nothing we can do about it. It's a learning experience. And I think that that's what it best should be classified as, is a learning experience, because there were some good passing. There was some good parts of that race. So um, So I I know I I enjoyed that. So it's yeah. uh, it's different for for some folks. No, and this is a discussion, right? We're we're trying to. I, I I really want to bring a lot of these issues that people again and again. I really hope this is, you know, I know a ton of people hate me, and I would love for them to listen to this show because I'm trying to. Even if you don't like me and anything that I say, that's fine. But we're all IndyCar fans. That's that's a great thing. A lot of us can be IndyCar fans. Maybe we hope to get more IndyCar fans. But I Thank but you, I'm we're, we're we're trying to have this discussion. And read some of the things, and and I well, I, I saw all the you know, shoot. I thought I you know it would have seemed like I murdered a family of dogs. The amount of hate that I was getting on the internet and IndyCar in general, but that did not happen. So I love dogs. I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that. Um, but uh, let's go through. There's an account on 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 Twitter uh, uh, X. The platform is called now uh, Champ Web. Now again, I think Champ Web. Uh, it, the, whoever they are, I actually don't know who runs that account, honestly, but uh, they've been kind Sounds to me. Sounds like a cartoon newscaster. Champ Webb, yeah, there you go. Um, but they do a lot for the series. They do try to put a ton of emphasis on the history of the series. Uh, but uh, but boy, are they harsh critics, too. I, there's a, They're very harsh, maybe possibly too harsh critics of our series. Um, but I will give them credit. They put a list of things, and I would like to read through this list because, again, this is a, a community member that is followed by several people in our in our community. Um, so they put a list together of things that may, might maybe may be used for improvement. And, again, I'm trying to get some people involved. A, number one, uh, the race is the season opener or the season closer, ideally the opener with a completely fresh slate. You get all the season to promote it. Putting in the middle of the season is just awkward. I agree. As we talk about with Alex Pillow, I think it needs to be the beginning or the end. Most likely even the beginning because it gets 100%. everyone jazzed up, gets everyone in race mode. Uh, I do believe that having it at the beginning of the season for sure is the right move. Bad timing of the event. We, we could all agree. On, I think a lot of us can agree on that. Um, you have 20. Now, point number two. Would you agree, Chase, by the way, with point number one? Would you think that, hey, no, a thousand percent, the like it needs to be the beginning. I, the beginning is all that works for me. I agree. Like, I, and, I, and I think that, you know, like, look, look at what NASCAR does with the Clash and find a way to create that type of an atmosphere, replicate that type of an atmosphere, because that is that is fun. I've been out there before. You've been out there before. No. It's a great weekend. It's a great event. And there's definitely still room for that exclusivity for, for you know, people that maybe don't want to be around. Like, like I think, feel like people look at the Thermal Club folks as, like, you know, not the non-common folk. They don't want to be around yeah. the common folk, you know. There's that's fine. You can be whatever you want. Do do your thing. But there's room for everybody to have a good time. And so I think that uh, I think that the beginning of the season is where it counts. Yeah. So point number two, you have 27 cars, single lap qualifying, inclusive of a pit stop. So full lap plus a hot lap. Yes, it will take about an hour of TV time, but you can stagger the laps with drivers. Now, I, I I do like that idea. Yeah, you have to think what TV time do you have available? Uh, are people going to be angry that if you have to put something like that on Peacock? I, I don't know. Um, I, I do like the idea of single lap qualifying. We talked about it with Alex Pillow. I love the overtake idea in qualifying. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, we're going to talk about that in our pros and cons too. But uh, that's an interesting one. and it, it, Potentially something there. Uh, point number three, Royal Rumble format. 30 laps of guaranteed green. Every lap, starting on lap two, the last place driver gets knocked out and enters pit lane. So here's the problem I have with that. I I I I, I like it, um, but we are an open wheel racing series, and there is not. I mean, yes, you can pass, but I think if this was at an oval, 
that would work on a road course. You're just going to eliminate the same, like, no, I, I don't, I don't think there's going to be any, because with no tire deg, like you just give basically the cars that are best on cold tires uh, or the first lap of tires, the best chance, but you, you have to be so much faster than someone to make a pass. Like we saw at the end of the final tire wear contributed to all those passes. So I, I don't know if that, when it comes to reality, like what actually happens in motorsport, if that's possible, you just start last and you're probably not going to go anywhere. And maybe you do. There's an idea there, but I think you have to think about legitimately how open wheel racing works. I, I think that there's maybe if they have a ton of overtake and they're really going for it, maybe, maybe there's something there. I just, I, I, I don't know. I just don't know. I've seen a lot of road course races in my life and I haven't seen a ton of passes like, oh, one car, one lap. One car, the next lap. Like, that car has to be so much faster than everyone. So, you know, maybe maybe you open up those lap segments a little bit. Maybe it's af after every three laps. I don't know. Chase, what do you think about that one? That one right there, I'm going to be straight dead honest with you. Um, just goes back to my oval talk. Like, and you, you pretty much cleared that one up. Um, I mean, it's just, at what cost? Like, watching that happen that way, like, what is that really going to bring for entertainment value? like w when it's set up the way that it currently is. So that's where I'm at with it. Got it. Um, okay, well, that's interesting. So point four, and again, this is I just want to get through this because I think this is important to bring up. A lot of people, you know, saw this. Um, so on lap 26 of this 30-lap race, uh, the final four are grouped for a four-lap shootout with unlimited push to pass. Now, I like that idea, but are people going to be, people were already angry about 12 cars. Are you going to be angry about four cars? Maybe, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I love the idea of unlimited push to pass. I think you still see then a uh, tire conservation game uh, because you want to have the best tires for the last four laps. So you got to think of a lot more factors when it comes to this. But again, creative idea. I do. I do believe so. Uh, next point. Throughout the entire weekend, cars cannot change tires. Now I'm unsure how heat cycles would work from qual to race. What does that mean? Throughout the entire weekend, cars cannot change tires. Well, we don't have a tire that can last practice, qualifying, and a race. So I don't what? I don't know how that works, if I'm not going to lie. Champ Webb, you've been great to me. I don't know how that's possible. I, 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 yeah, so I, I, maybe we'll have to expand on that a little bit more. I, I Everyone's do like got opinions. I do like the qualifying tires going into the race. I thought, again using the same tires for the uh, for the first half of the race and the second half of the race. I think that worked out great for us this weekend if you didn't hate it enough to where you sat through it. Um, now, this one, this one is an interesting one, Chase, and I look forward to getting your opinion on that. You invite 27 fans to the track, and the fans sit with the race engineer on the pit stand. They win $500,000, and the driver wins $500,000. Now... Let me tell you, there's a whole host of problems with that. I love the idea of potentially giving a fan a lottery win here. Like, 500 grand changes lives. How do you pick the 27 fans? Because guess how many people are going to be so angry that they were not one of the 27? I don't think you can, like, legally do that without people getting angry if it's like a, a raffle thing. Maybe just offer great 50-50 raffle tickets at this event. I don't know. Maybe there's a 50-50 raffle, which I enjoy participating in at hockey games or, or basketball games. You know what I mean? But that one, again, I love the idea of getting fans involved. I really do. I, I want to see that. But that one, you know, interesting idea to get people involved. No team is going to let so – I mean, you, well, you, you could let someone get on there, but – but I, I yeah, I, I don't understand that one because again, the the fan that's where I, that's where I have a problem with it because I'm like, how are you gonna fit 27 people on the box? Like, like what, no, what well, are we talking about? One per box, here? one per one per one per team. All right, well, I, I'll say this much. That that's a that's a really cool, innovative, and and possibly interactive idea. Um, yes, but. It, you there's other ways to do that like a sweepstakes or, or something else like i mean it, it yes like that would make it more like a reality show that you're watching that weekend but it's like you said you're gonna have too many people that are gonna just be like like you you, you ever watched like a are you ever like entered to win something and you had to watch it and then as soon as they announced the winner you just stopped watching like yeah like that's a scam that? that guy probably played someone to be a part of it you know what i mean like 
I, yeah. yeah. I, I think what I, don't I think what we I need think that. I think you can do a nice giveaway. Just do a nice giveaway I trip. Love the 50, you know, 50, one lucky thing. person. I love so, the 50-50 raffle. I just, I don't know. Driver 50, gets 50 500 raffle. grand. Driver gets 500 grand. You pay for a 50-50 raffle ticket. It's purely a raffle. And a fan who attended the race, or maybe IndyCar Nation fan club, I don't know. Uh, but boom, then there's a raffle as well. And maybe, and maybe it's all, there's all kinds of stuff with charity. I don't know. But again, if we really want to get people involved and more money involved, then that's great. Uh, but we'll see. So here's, there's final, two final points. Uh, thermal is fine for the track. Coda would be fine too. Just needs to be a track where there is enough passing and the laps aren't too crazy long. Interesting point about Coda. I, I agree that would be an interesting one. With 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 good tire dag, Coda would be interesting, but it's a very long lap. Uh, but Coda was a long or uh, Thermal was a long lap too. So again, that's an interesting point. Final point. Um, he says, now for those of you who think I just complain, here is a viable plan. I complain when there are obvious parts of a plan that are going to go wrong. So we appreciate Champ Web for giving us this list. I, I appreciated reading it. I thought there were several other folks that gave us uh, a list, but. I just want to read something like that. And again, I do hope that there's more positivity generated from that account because there's a lot of people who responded to that who just, again, threw a lot of shade. But this is part of building building the building process. Um, yeah. Let's get into our pros and cons, Chase. I, I, want, to, I want to do a uh, Connor Daly, Garage Guy Chase uh, pros and cons segment. Uh, this is, uh, I don't know if this segment has a sponsor, but we appreciate it. <laughs> um I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna read out my three pros, Chase, and then I'll let you read out three pros. Is that fine? Yeah, that works for me. All right. So I, here's three pros that I took out of the weekend. And again, this is probably a good way, a good way to look at it. Uh, I love the shootout type qualifying. Pro number one for me is shootout type qualifying. I think every qualifying we should have overtake available. I think that made the drivers really bust their butts. They were working hard. Uh, and and if you messed it up, you messed it up. McLaren completely royally messed that one up. Part of racing. That's part of racing. It, not everyone's going to be happy, of course. That's how it works. Uh, but I was really blown away that some people had enough overtake, even after that red flag, to do a lap, enough tires to make it work. So I loved overtaking qualifying. I thought that was a fantastic uh, thing. Uh, pro number two. When you look at 10-lap segments, I would say the racing in a 10-lap segment uh, was great in the second half now again first half you're like yikes this looks this it did it did not look good but did it look good when Alex Rossi was driving around at 200 or 195 miles an hour when he was trying to save fuel to win the Indy 500 at the end of the race no it didn't look fast he looked very slow but he won the Indy 500 it's a strategy racing is a strategy I don't watch like, if you watch a NASCAR race, there's an hour segment in the middle where there's nothing happening sometimes. You know what I mean? Especially the Daytona 500. You're just like, all right, well, just got to watch it to get to the end. So if, if you wanted racing the entire time, I don't know what series you're looking for. Maybe it's, you know, hey, maybe it's USAC racing. I love USAC racing. There's a lot of good racing there, too. Maybe they're racing all the time, short stints, boom, here we go. But in an open wheel race, St. Petersburg, I didn't see any passing for the first half of the race for the first stint of the race until there was a yellow. Uh, you know, and again, that's not a bad thing. That's how racing works. We're trying to build the strategy, see what's going on. Maybe there's a couple passes towards the back. But when you look at how short the segments were, 10 laps, okay, cool, 10 laps, all right, we got it down. And then we had another 10 laps, and then you had cars going at it. Like, I, I thought that was great racing. I, I, I don't know. I saw Colton Herta fire it into brake zones that you should not really be able to brake that much later than people but he was doing it. He was trying it. There were cars hitting each other. You had Indy 500 champions, Alex Rossi, Newgarden, going wheel to wheel, just running each other off the track. Uh, I, I just, I thought that was great. So if you don't, if you don't like that, I'm sorry. I, I, I do hope you find the racing that you enjoy. I really do. And it's not a bad thing. You can have an opinion on it. But like, I saw cars using overtake, trying to get by each other, hitting each other. I thought that was great. And there were no wrecks. Like, they didn't go yellow because they wrecked each other. So that's my second pro. Third pro, money. Now, it was not a million. But this money is very helpful for drivers and teams. As we mentioned in the last episode, every weekend, the prize money is not that 
great. So this event gives people a chance to to have a better day. Uh, I, I do believe I read a quote that said maybe we kind of spread the prize money out because the guy who finished fifth got the same amount of money as uh, Renus VK who got wrecked on the first lap of the first heat. Maybe that's maybe that's a bit of a you know th- that is an interesting one. Um, but uh, but those are my three pros that I would say. Chase, what do you think of those? Well, what's your reaction? No, I mean those are all good. Um, and we definitely, we, you know, definitely some overlap there on mine. Um, you know, my my pros are a little bit different for for this race more than likely. Uh, the first thing I want to say is social media coverage for this race was pretty good. I, uh, I I kept up all through the weekend online. I saw what you. Um, and some of the other creators were doing out there, um, you know, at the track, like interviewing drivers, watching, uh, watching along, you know, like clips of, of the different things that were happening until Sunday. Unfortunately, I was following along, you know, during qualifying and things like that on my phone. So I didn't get to see a lot of it. Uh, pro number two for me was you had a little bit of drama. There was a little bit of drama. Now, look, I, I you know, we all like a little bit of drama, you know, Scott Dixon, Roman Grosjean. He won. Love it. You know, spin him that. spinning. He's look. Quick story about you that. gotta know. Quick story about that too. Grosjean walking back. He's kind of fighting off a safety worker. I did not like that. Did not like that at all. Uh, I hope. I'm sure Grosjean will get a stern talking to you. You do not push away the safety people. They're just trying to take care of us. But Grosjean walks yeah. right next to me. I'm watching at the Firestone uh, pit stand, which is like right at pit pit exit. There, he's literally walking in his helmet, and I look at him like. I, was, I don't know what to say. I'm just like, ah, it sucks, bro. He looks. He just looks at me, and he's got this. His eyes look like they're on fire, and he's like, "Who was it?" And I said, "It was Dixon." <laughs> and, and he just walks like off. Batman, I was like, "Dude," I was like that. And someone, someone <laughs> who was standing there, because there were some fans there, there were some spectators. So people behind me were like, "Oh man, you don't get that in an F1 race." And I'm like, "Nope, you don't." Like, like we're right yeah. here in the streets. <laughs> You're about to see a fist fight. So anyway, continue. <laughs> That no, was good drama. Just, yeah, Roman Grosjean. He's just he's having one of those times, dude. He's having one of those years. Um, you can tell the frustrations there. But having a little bit of drama, that's a good thing. That's a that's a big pro. And number three, you know, I I like being educated on Thermal Club. It was nice. It was All nice right. to to hear and learn about about this place that exists. Like I feel like overall, like that was a big part of the initiative here. You, you we're, let's educate some folks on what this place is. Um, you know, so I I, I liked here. I didn't mind hearing it a lot. Uh, but commentary good as always. Lee Diffie and the boys in the booth. Um, you know, I I did enjoy that. So while a lot of people, you know, maybe had a lot to complain about, and maybe I'm not the best person to compare yourself up to because I am, like, really for the first time in my life putting, like, 100% focus on this series this year. So it's, you know, I'm I'm kind of learning and evolving. So this is the good thing, right? The people that are like me that have never really, truly, like, sat through an entire season of IndyCar and, like, that be their primary focus, they're going to be in line with me looking at what this is and we're just happy to be here. That's called growth. That's a good Yo, thing. I like that. Hey, that was a great statement. I appreciate that. So now let's get into some cons. Hey, we're going to be fair. Everyone thinks that, like, now that we have a partnership with IndyCar, like, oh, they're, all they're going to do is say good things. It's like, no, I'm going to tell you exactly about what we don't like about this event. The first thing that Correct. I don't like about it is the perception. This is just one word that I wrote in my notes, the perception of it. The perception of where it was who it was for, because technically a race like this, like you want everyone to be able to consume it, right? And the, again, the TV ratings, which we, we will get into, they were not great, but I'll tell you, not as bad as I thought. <laughs> From what you saw on the internet, I thought there was going to be like zero people watching. Turns out a lot of people watch. Um, but the perception of it was bad. We got to change the perception Um I do believe if we do something like this again, you have to open it up to anyone who wants to come. You have to open it up to more of a um, of a kind of, hey, this is going to be a wild weekend of motorsport, just a bunch of drivers getting after it for some cash. Whereas, you know, the perception was like, no one's allowed in here, uh, but we're going to have kind of some drivers run around. There's going to be no signage anywhere because we don't want to... It just, the perception of it, and again, this was all... A lot of what a lot of what perception is is not actually real. Like pe- people, 
people were saying a lot of things about this event that was not that were not real. Like it, it, it wasn't meant only for the rich. Like we have it on NBC television. Peacock was on for hours all day so you could watch race cars and do stuff. So it, it is meant for everyone, but again, it's not the perception was bad. And and I completely agree with that and it's and it's fair and those who perceived it that way, I get it. Like we understand the perception of the event is bad. So you're going to have to change that. You're going to have to change that. Uh second one for me that we talked about a little bit, the timing. Uh there's balloons going on my screen right now cuz I think my Hello, computer balloons. agrees. My computer agrees that the timing of this event was wrong. Um I I do like the idea of the beginning of the season. Uh, the end of the season doesn't really seem right because you've already got the champion. You've already got everything in place. Like uh, everyone just wants to go on vacation. Um, you know, if we had a if we had a summer break like F one does, like F one kind of shuts down all for August and stuff like that. Uh, you know, maybe there's something there. But again, that that puts a lot of work on the crew because the crew want their summer break. So I think this is for sure the 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 only thing that makes sense is the beginning of the season. I'd rather see it at a place like Homestead in Miami. Uh, I'd rather see it at a place like, uh, I mean, even if Texas, you know, Texas, if we can get the people to come there again, if we can get the racing to be as good as it was the last two years there, um, you know, just a a, a more exciting uh, venue for motor racing. Uh, I think the timing is, it it was not good. And my last con, and this just absolutely grinds my gears, is how the podium looked for this event. Uh, the podium, I believe, is an is an issue that we have put forward as a group of drivers for a couple of years now. And I and again, we love the, the we pop, people probably have a lot more work to do for our series than fix the podium. But Marshall Pruitt put out a you know I'm sure not a lot of people like this tweet, but he basically put out a tweet that said. The same podium that these IndyCar drivers are standing on for a million bucks is the same podium that go kart racers stand on if they win a race. And I was like, "Oh boy, that's, Dang, a, that's a tough bro. one." And then a go kart racing series actually uh, responded to that tweet and said, "No, actually, ours is better." And it did look better. It did look better. Oh no! Than no. Now, like, we 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 said perception was bad for this event. The perception of our podium and and what that looks like. For a million dollar event, well, five hundred thousand dollar event, we have got to fix that. Like, I am sorry, but we have got to make it look cool for winning. Like, you make it look sick. You do a whole ceremony where you got people there, you got flags up there, you got celebration, you got sponsors, put NTT, Chevy, whoever, Honda, DHL whoever workers. You, just make it look cool. Like that's I'll be, Chase, you and I go get a bunch of two by fours. We could maybe build something and paint it. Like I, like, I don't know. It, it's just the podium just looked embarrassing. I'm, just, I'm sorry, but that's I, I just, agree. That's the true statement, and we got to fix that. Like that's that's me. And again, I'm not. I don't want to. I talked about not throwing stones. Here's a couple rocks. I'm not gonna lie. I had to throw a couple rocks. Constructive there I criticism. But because I want to, I, I I don't know how to figure out how to help. But I would like to understand. How do we make that better? Is it the promoter? How do we I don't fix know. The is, podium is who is it? But we gotta fix it. If you like, it, 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 it's so cool to be on an IndyCar podium. I've done it, thankfully. People don't believe that, but I've been on there. It's the coolest thing in the world. And but I still feel like being on an F three podium when I won back in you know hundred million years ago. That was even cooler than maybe being on the IndyCar podium because like we had flags, anthems. You're up way up in front of people. I don't know. We just got to fix that. So anyway, those are my cons. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, it's, it's so true, right? Like there's truth in the humor behind it. Like, cause like, that's one of the first things I noticed was that podium. And I'm going to tell you, like, you know, it, it looks like one of them little stepping stools. So can't, can't be having stepping stools. Definitely need to have uh big dog podiums. Yes. Um, so tell us some my of your cons. cons. Tell us some of your, Yeah. The the first my first con is very broad. Um, it's kind of bland. Uh, the event itself, like like watching it, you're already in a desert. It's already kind of empty. You got some nice scenery there, like with a mountain. Other than that, there's nothing else really kind of going on to like keep the jazz flowing. Other than the race. So for people that obviously can't be there, that are spectating at home, 
there's just not a lot of eye candy. There wasn't a lot to look at. Um, you know, uh, aside from that, I'll say that uh, for, for con number two, you know, more events for the all-star race. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned on our last episode, get the pit crew guys involved. Let's agree. do a pit crew yeah, competition. Agree. Let's jazz it up a little bit. You know, you got to, if this is an all-star race, there's no points on the line. I mean, get, get some razzle-dazzle in there. Make it a little, a little bit of a show, but also show off the athleticism of the pit crew guys. I think that that is a big one that is not currently done in IndyCar that should be done. So I'm calling for all my pit crew fellas, ladies out there, you know, like, like, like stand up, get your shine. Uh, for con number three, I'm going to have to say, and you know, I, I, I did, I did do some research. I did do some thinking on it, but con number three, we, we've got, we, we, we just, we, we've got to make entertainment happen. Entertainment has, if, if it's not happening on the track, you know, I wanted to look in. I wanted to see, hey, was there anything that was done to maybe get a performer out there, maybe a musician, an artist, something that could add to the element of the all-star race. I didn't really find much. So I get it. It is what it is, and, and it didn't happen. But don't let that be the case for next time, maybe. Maybe yeah. maybe just, you know, it's not too much to just reach out to an artist and, and see what you can do there. So... Uh, I would say, yeah, the, the, it was a little bit bland, need to have a pit crew competition, and some entertainment. And those are the cons. Those are things we didn't get. All right. No, I, those are, that's a good list. I respect that. Um, and, again, we're trying to do this because we care about the sport, right? We, we, we want to see it grow. We say that many, many times. And my quote, yeah. again, at the beginning of the show that we talked about this, that doesn't look good for me. But I am I do hope people are willing to give me a second chance. You know, there are several people that I noticed that don't even follow me in the first place and just had terrible things to say about me. I get that. Yeah, that, that, but that doesn't matter. I hope you guys give me another chance. That was a bad quote, bad take. Uh, but I'm happy to admit that. See, I, I could admit when I'm wrong. A lot of our, a lot of the people that throw all these terrible things at IndyCar will never ever be like, you know what? Actually, maybe I was wrong, or like maybe maybe we can do better. So I just hope that people can do that. Now again, let's talk. Let, now let's talk about TV ratings. Okay, another tough subject, tough subject because NASCAR. We got we got March Madness going on, right? Hey, March Madness is sick. Uh, I watched an amazing Creighton game. People are saying Max Verstappen broke his car in the F1 race because he wanted to watch the Creighton game. I don't know. I, I that might have been a that might have been just me. I tweeted that from the dinner table. Um, uh, we <laughs> saw Max Verstappen not win a Formula One race. That's great. That's big. Uh, I think I thought that was big F1 media just being like, you know what? All right, we gotta we gotta we gotta start getting our hands in here. They probably put a few things in the brake brake duct. Mm, all right, Max is out because I heard it was the AI clip the clip clip the brake duct. This is a complete conspiracy, but it would make sense. Their ratings are going down. They know that they're losing the audience. Got to do something. And now you're early enough in the season to where you're like, oh, someone else got to win. It, what's going on? But, I, you know, I, I I think it's smart. I think they got a semi-entertaining race out of it, but I didn't watch it, of course, because it happened in the middle of the night, um, and I was at dinner. Uh, but... That's F1 talk. That's F1 talk. Um, but the rate ratings-wise, did we ever actually get the official ratings of the F1 race? I know you said that there was half a million, but I, that sounds I saw, a little low. I didn't I get the official. I don't know Bobby no. the uh, ratings for that one, but but we, we can't comment. I saw 516 on my timeline, but that the, allegedly, it's not yeah. true. I But I, I don't know. I just I remember seeing the photo of Carlos, and I remember seeing the ratings there. I, I went to look it up today. I couldn't find it, so... Got it. You can't always believe what you read on the internet. So, well, we can't did, really we say. did get we did get ratings for NASCAR and IndyCar, and again, NASCAR is on a great run. I we got to give them credit Three because millies. they are getting more. They are up on races from last year. That is impressive. Uh, during a March Madness weekend, that is impressive. People are watching motorsport. Over three and a half million people. Over like that's that's a ton of people consuming your sport. So. Race. They are doing something right. There are three and a half million people watching NASCAR races. We had eight hundred sixteen thousand people watch the IndyCar race on NBC. Uh, that is the lowest TV rating without an NFL conflict since the twenty two race two at Iowa, uh, which is not that long ago. 
Um, we were up against them one one men's March Madness game as well as a couple women's games. So again, a lot of a lot of stuff to watch on television. Um, but this is again, if, if we if we continue to see this trend, um, that's difficult because more and more people are watching NASCAR uh, and less people are watching what we are doing. So I, I don't know why that is, but I, I do believe. Are we that going to Netflix? We, they are going to Netflix, probably. <laughs> we are going to Netflix now. Yeah, we are on Netflix now. Yeah, the the hundred days to indie does get to be on Netflix, which is a big deal. Uh, the hundred days to indie guys were out there. I might have even hey, they were filming Felix Rosenquist on the grid of the heat race, and I talked to Felix, and they filmed us. Maybe this is my chance to finally be on the show for more than ten seconds. I don't know. There you Maybe go. Maybe not. Maybe not. But we'll there see. You go. Um. So again, I, I think you see NASCAR is doing powerful things. Uh, IndyCar is still finding our, our, our road. Now, again, Alex Pillow mentions in our, in, in our interview in a little bit that once we get to Long Beach here, we got some consistency. We got both race, race, Indy. We even got the test. The test is on Peacock in two weeks at Indy. So you got two day test at Indy. Everyone's going to be jazzed up because Kyle Larson's going to be there. We think, uh, you're going to yeah. have all 33 cars, maybe even more, uh, testing there. So that's going to get the hype, the jazz, the excitement going. Uh, I do hope that we can build on this. Now, Long Beach is on USA Network, so that's going to be a uh, yeah, tough one. That's going to be a uh, yikes. But Big one for JAG fans, though, fans of the show JAG. There you go. Good yeah. for them. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Um, and Law & Order SVU. Yeah, like a great Law yes. & Order SVU crowd. Yep. Dun, dun. Um, yep. So... I just, I just hope that we can build momentum. I, I, I do hope that we can build momentum over these next few weeks because we do need to see a change in this. I don't know what the answer is. As I, as we've said before, everyone's trying to find it on the internet. Everyone's getting real negative on the internet, and we got to stop that. I, 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 I can, I continue to implore people. Like, look, it's so easy, and maybe it's fun. Maybe you get a bunch of clicks because you tweet something negative about it. But I just, I think it's ridiculous. Um, so hopefully, we can build some, build some momentum. And again, let's all work together. We love our we love the IndyCar fans and we want new IndyCar fans. So if 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 we as right. fans are just tweeting terrible sh- stuff about our sport, right. why would new people who follow you who maybe don't watch IndyCar want to watch IndyCar? Oh. So I, I what the heck? Yeah. You know what I mean? We got to build this city um, on rock and roll, everyone. Yeah, so 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 the ratings were tough. Um but uh but that was kind of that was a lot of our of our conversation uh, around this event. I, I wanted to really respond to people uh, and kind of let let them know what I thought about it. Um, you know, we we were very lucky to get Alex Palo on. Obviously, we have a great partnership with the NTT and Car Series. You're going to hear a great interview with him. Um, but uh, but yeah, that was uh, that was our IndyCar you know IndyCar at Thermal uh, Club review. I think there were a couple funny moments that happened. I saw the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Real Real Housewives. That of Utah, was the moment. That was an interesting oh, the one. The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Utah. Like what a world, dude! What a world. Yeah, we didn't know that now. was a thing. They had two yeah. uh, like black SUVs, two black SUVs pull up, and they had a bunch of camera. I'm walking out of a breakfast room with Elio Castroneves, and I see a bunch of these cameras like encircling these vehicles i was like shoot elio are these for you and he's like oh no who are these people i'm like i don't know is it the housewives and they all get out and there's a big you know big hoopla and all kinds of stuff going on oh yeah uh, they went over a lot and talked of to joseph newgarden pants. obviously joseph newgarden had to get a chat in there scott mclaughlin um yeah and and i want to know chase did you think like I, I put out a lot of social content with indycar uh, we did a lot of work with the Track Talk podcast gals or a couple gals there that have a have a podcast about motorsport as well. Feel free to check that one out. Uh, and Ash Vandelay as well, who's a uh, who's a very prominent in the motorsport world. Did you see a good bit of content from us? Was there was there some enjoyable stuff there that you found? I actually enjoyed being a part of it. I enjoyed doing the content for this that series. Was, that was one. That was legitimately one of my pros, man. Like I I think that IndyCar did a fantastic job covering the event this weekend. Like. You know, you got your regulars, like, you know, your Marshall Pruitt. Like, you know, I, I found out about the wins that morning from Marshall's, uh, from Marshall's Twitter. So I'd recently followed him. I always loved seeing Scotty Mack just like, like, good morning, Marshall Pruitt. Like, he would always hit that. And I was like, who's the fella? And you go and you find it out. You get to meet him. Great guy. But with what you guys did 
over on the IndyCar. I thought that it was great. It was fun and it was engaging content. Like you wanted to watch it. You wanted to kind of just, you know, make a comment. I saw a lot of the clips, like all in all, this was one of the best weekends. I think as far as like uh, somebody that watches along online could have had with social media uh, from IndyCar in quite a while. So I hope to see that trend continue. It looked great. So as somebody that keeps up with the news on Twitter, kudos. I like that. Man, there was a lot that happened this weekend. There's, I, I feel like uh, I talked a lot. There was a lot of motor racing. There was uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, How was the cuisine? Cuisine was good. I tell you what. Now, again, this might be uh, – this. this is – I was lucky. I got there was a little lounge there that the drivers and the team members, the drivers and owners got to go in. And I'm not gonna lie, I got to I got to be a part of this community. Thankfully, because my hard card says driver on it, I was a bit of a clown, but um, I was a clown with a microphone. Um, but uh, I will say the cuisine was good, and I got offered to do like a NASCAR time attack race, like in the middle of the day on Saturday. Uh, but I had to what? do some work, and I didn't have any of my. They have a bunch of like. NASCAR Cup chassis. Casey Mears was there. Well, it was wild, wild to see Casey Mears. Anders Krohn was there, who I raced against in the uh, in the Pro Mazda series way back in the day. He was doing that race. Uh, there were some interesting folks there doing that uh, little. <laughs> they were basically like their older older Cup cars. Um, and yeah, they They're did like a little, Winston little race. cars. They were members. They were members of the club. Friends of the <laughs> friends of the club there. Um, but that was interesting. But yeah, the food was good, man. There was and and what was interesting if you bought a ticket, I guess. Uh, there was a lot of food trucks there and like ice cream trucks. All that stuff was free. So if you bought a ticket a and you got, you know, you're in the paddock, all that stuff is free. So there was food there, free food, all that stuff. Now, again, this is a, this is a small number, but but I was actually surprised about the people who did buy tickets there. There were there were several people, several fans there that were enjoying it, several fans that I've seen at other events as well. Um, and, and we respect them for making that effort to get out there. Um, I did get to enjoy a bit of casino time with Colton Herta and Kyle Kirkwood. We, we we checked out a little local casino. We dabbled a little bit, saw some, you know, played some cards, you know, messed around a little bit. Didn't know that California, you can't use, uh, well, on the roulette table, there's no ball. They don't use a ball on the roulette table. Apparently that's illegal. Now, I don't know how all these gambling rules work, but that's kind of wild. I didn't know that. I didn't trust the roulette table. Yeah. Really. I didn't see the ball moving. They said they they said this is the house. There's nothing you can do about yeah. it. Like that's what they said. So roulette yeah. was a, roulette was a giant scam in the state of California. Um, but uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, man, it was just a lot to happen. I I I feel like sometimes I try to have a lot of structure on this show, and and uh, and now I'm just kind of like I think we I think we talked about it all. Do you, you think there's anything else that we got from this weekend that's really worth you know getting into? We got another show next week that I don't know who's going to be on. But uh, but it'll be yeah. a good one because we're going to be looking for um you know for 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 what's going on next. Indie test is coming up. But yeah, anything else from the weekend, Chase? You want to get you get want to get in before we get to Alex Pelo? No, I'm just going to say this. I, I'm very excited to talk to Street Shark Alex Pelo, giving him a new nickname. Um, and I uh, I think that we've covered all the basis of of everything there really was to talk about this weekend. And as we go forward, it's just going to get better. It's just going to get better, whether you like it or not. So I love it. Let's keep going good. It takes all of us, though. It, it takes all of us to to help this. Again, think about when you are when you put out what you put out on the Internet, that goes to a certain group of people. All those people might not watch IndyCar. Some of those people might watch IndyCar. But if if all you do is continue to you know throw shade at a series, that, that really at this point we are in a position that we need every one of those extra viewers that might – like see a positive, see a, see something on the internet and be like, oh, that be that might be cool or worth watching. But I just see so many of the same accounts and so many other accounts. Just like I, I you know, I, we're, we're, the the series is not out to personally attack you. So like, they're they're not coming after you. You know what I mean? Like we're we're just trying to build a business here. Roger Penske's working his butt off. Penske Entertainment people are truly working on this. The teams are, the drivers are. Uh, you know, we're contributing here. So, uh, you know, you just, yeah, we're, we're building something. So with that, um, let's get to Alex Pillow, the winner of the Million Dollar Challenge. Uh, great interview with Alex Pillow. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, folks, as usual, with our new partnership with the NTT IndyCar Series, we have the winner of the most recent IndyCar motor racing event that uh, was not for points, 
but it was for a bag of money, the $500,000 challenge uh, with a million dollars in prizes overall. Alex Pillow is the winner. Alex, first of all, hand up. I made a bad prediction. I, as you I did. As you saw the clip, I did say that the McLarens were going to win. And you said, hand up. But after the first practice session, I will say, I said, Alex is going to win this by a mile. So anyway, congratulations. Thank My you. My prediction thank you. wrong, but you did amazing. Thank you so much. It was it was a great weekend overall. Like since since practice one, and then yeah, I told you, I I told you you did you did a bad decision. I told you before the race, but uh, <laughs> I hear you. That's okay. That's okay. You you need to improve your predictions, and that's fine. We'll give you time. He's sleeping on you, bro. Tell I, I, know. Yeah, I know, but it it hurts because I thought we had a, like a friendship relationship, like close relationship. We're teammates out of the motorsport. I see you in the gym. We suffer together sometimes, and you just didn't think that I was gonna win. Like, look, I'm not proud of it. Sad. I, I'm not proud of it. I, I I don't know what got into me. It was I think it was the it was the Ganassi. You know, at St. Pete, there was kind of a bunch of weird mystic stuff going on. You guys weren't on the podium, so that's on me. However, and I saw the barber test, and like, oh man, Alex Ross CP one. I you know, so I, I just read that's too fine. deep into it. I've had a lot of bad takes lately, according to the internet. So that's going to be what's going to go on. But talk We're about gone. this weekend. Talk about what you what you thought was good, because again, there was so much track time. There was a ton yep. of testing that I actually enjoyed, and and we got Peacock viewers for all of that. Right, people could see what we're doing in testing. Uh, there had to be a lot that you guys were able to use for the rest of the season that came from this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was great. Honestly, uh, testing wise, it was great. We had a lot of track time. Uh, lots of tires. Um, you always want more. You always want them, like thirty seconds a day, but that doesn't tires exist. Are gold. Yeah, yeah. Tires but, are gold. Uh, honestly, we had enough that we could do big changes, small changes, and that we could be on track running quite a lot. Um, and it was fun. It was a fun weekend. It's a fun track. It's it's super fun to drive. Um, it's true that the conditions change a lot, and for testing, it's not amazing uh, with the sand and and just like the track gets dirty. Um, but still, it was amazing. It's the same for everybody, um, and I thought it was great for um, a driver's standpoint. It was it was fun getting that much track time. That's good. Let us know a little bit about the wind. For a while, like the first day, for the first little bit of testing, the first day essentially, not a ton of wind, but the wind storms like kicked up. They had to red flag the session for a little bit because it was like a hurricane going on. Yeah, I saw a dust tornado. I saw tents flying. And you guys were out there in the car, and I'm thinking these corners must be completely different. I, I would see some people just turn into turn seven at the end of the back straight, and they would just go straight off the track. Like, can you? Yeah, can it you was give, bad. Like, can you give people an idea of what that feels like as a driver? Like, whereas one corner might be completely awesome, and the next corner you're like, did all of my wheels fall off? Yeah, so it it felt like that. It's like when you go on a road car um, on the highway, and suddenly you get a, this like massive wind coming, and the car just moves a little bit. Uh, it's the same, but like times five or ten. Like it's it's big, especially uh, being so fast and so precise on the Indy car. Uh, a small change, you feel it a lot. And it was actually turn six was amazing because we had uh, headwind and. It was like a lot of grip, lots of, of downforce. So you got into turn seven with lots of confidence, as you say, and suddenly you would just like go straight because you were getting there. I don't know, eight, six miles an hour quicker. Um, there was no downforce and it felt like somebody was pushing you from behind, which was actually the win. But um, it was uh, it was challenging, but we went out because we didn't know if the race was going to be like that or not. Um, and it actually was a bit windy, not as much as what we saw uh, on Saturday practice, um, but yeah, it was it was tough. And the issue there at the thermal is also that the runoff are like normal sand, like desert sand. And as soon as there is a little bit of wind, it just blows into the track. Um, so you get there one lap, it would be a ton of grip. You would get on the other lap, and it would just be completely no grip at all. But um, it was it was challenging. Before I'm going to let Chase get in after this question, but I want to talk about qualifying. I thought qualifying was cool. I, I love the shootout style. I love the overtake. I think that's something that we need to be looking at for the future because there was something about the guys just getting out there. You either had one lap or maybe two. Like, obviously, you had to go out and do it after a red flag. Yeah. But 
I thought that was very interesting. People trying to get on the overtake as soon as possible really made the cars kick on traction, and traction seemed to be a big struggle for a lot of cars. Can you tell people how kind of, I guess, did you enjoy it, first of all, and then what was the most difficult part about, like, obviously you guys had a fast car, but what was the most difficult part about implementing the overtake to your overall lap? Yeah, I mean, it it made a big change. Like, I would say that it was probably six tenths to eight tenths uh, with that 40 wow. seconds of overtake. It was as soon as the wheel was straight, was pushing that overtake. And, you know, it's not a massive, massive difference, but it's enough that you will spin the tires and that car balance changes a lot. Um, I liked it, um, but it's true that I didn't like the fact of, like, it was only a one uh, eight-minute qualifying. And I was in the qualifying that we had red flag. I was using my overtake. I only had like 13 seconds left. I had four corners left. And then suddenly the red came when I was on a really disaster. good lap. Ultimate disaster for a driver. You're on, the, you're, you're on the eater of a lap and then you're like, nope, all right. Yeah, I wanted to stop the car and cry there in middle of turn eight. Um, but uh, honestly, that felt like, man, if this was like Q1 in a normal race weekend, it would have been really tough because there was some cars like I think McLaren, they already done their lap and using the overtake without having any compromise with the uh, red flag, which this is, is good for them. Like they were able to do it faster than us. Um, and we risk it by uh, just warming the tires one more lap. But um, I like the fact that you only had one perfect lap and you had to put everything together. Um, but probably I would keep it, for example, for fast. Six. I think that would be amazing to just get uh, Q1 and Q2 it's like normal as we all always have. Um, and then fast six, you get U stars and 40 seconds of overtake, which that would be awesome because we would get really fast laps. It would be super challenging and you would have only one go. That's it. It would be just like a one lap, um, like the good old days. And I think that would make it super exciting. Um, but it was very, um, it was very fun for a driver. I mean, you knew you had those 40 seconds, they were gold one lap and you couldn't uh, lock, you couldn't do any mistake. Like you had to put everything together. Yeah, I I, I, I really enjoyed that. I, I do like the fast six idea too. That that could be something. There's something about just engaging that more power, seeing the lights flash on the steering wheel kind of yeah. gets people excited. I enjoyed it. Chase, go ahead here for Alex. Yeah, what's up, Alex? Uh, it's our first time getting a chat. I uh, I definitely wanted to to just you know commend you first and foremost on on your uh, your abilities on road and streets. Uh, you were very good at driving. I I kind of I don't know if you have a nickname. I gave you one. It was uh, Street Shark Alex Pillow. Uh, <laughs> you know you tear up them streets. I've seen you do it. Uh, Saint Pete though last week I I did kind of want to talk a little bit about that. You know we we were all a little nervous with with Chip Ganassi Racing and with you guys because I expected you to get out there, you know, and just, just swim to victory. That was, that was one of those deals, you know, when you're on the street. So how much changed between St. Pete and Thermal Club weekend? Were there any internal talks about the results from that race? And did you guys do anything to improve outside of mentality going into this weekend? Um, yeah, I mean, we struggled more than what we wanted. Um, but with that said, we finished six. Like it's not bad. Like it's it's not terrible. It's it's not great. Um, I get that, but uh, it was not terrible. Um, we had two cars in the top ten. Uh, Scott had um, a stall in during a pit stop, um, and he still finished ninth. So it was not a completely terrible result. It was not a great result. Um, but Sam Pete, at the same time, it's a place that we've. Uh, in general, struggled a little bit, um, except last year where Marcus won and Scott finished third, which was amazing. Um, but uh, me personally, also, I struggled every every year in St. Pete. It's, it's something that, um, yeah, I need to get on top of, of St. Pete and hopefully yeah, it will be next it. year. But, um, but uh, it's tough. And then, yeah, of course, we talked about, I mean, um, Chip, uh, wants us to win every single race, every single practice, and uh, he gives us everything we need to do that. Uh, so when we don't do that, um, he he wants to know why, and we also want to know why. It's like, hey, why is other teams better than us? It's not only one team. It was like three teams that were in front of us. So um, we made some changes, but it's not like 
uh, the mentality was uh, not right or that the setup was not right. It was just that we were missing that little bit of confidence uh, for the drivers to push and to get 100% out of the, out of the cars. So, um, yeah, I mean, setup changes almost uh, every single track. So um, Long Beach will be a lot better. We uh, normally tend to be a bit faster there and I'm a bit more comfortable. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, hopefully we can go to Long Beach and, and win there. I love that. What do you think about your nickname? Do you, do you, you approve? Can I get your approval? I approve. Hundred <laughs> percent. As long as it's a good name and it's aggressive and it's like the street shark. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's him. I wish it was true though. I wish that every time I was on the streets or road, I would be a killer. Um I don't think that's the way. Um <laughs> but uh I love it. I love it. I approve it. All right. You're you're good across the diverse schedule. You're you're not just on the streets. It's ovals too. The sky runs fast at Indy. It's all good. But we're but we're gonna yeah. stick with it. Let's see that we need to improve on the ovals. I need to improve on the ovals. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there as well. We'll get, I mean, I have a lot of chances this year with so many ovals. So. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. So We're many. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> so many ovals. It is. Um, it is. I know. I know. Um, so let's let's think about this weekend and, and what you looked at this, this whole year with five cars, right? Do you think it's been uh, nice to have that little bit of extra information has it been and and I actually got to interview several of the crew folks over there at uh, at Chip Ganassi Racing, and I noticed a lot of familiar faces. The, the, there's I hadn't got to really see anyone yet because I wasn't in St. Pete, but uh, but you got a lot of good new people on on different cars that I was like, oh, that guy came from McLaren, like that guy came from Andretti, like I, I I've seen you know a, a good influx of, of of people there. So is it has it been? good so far with that extra bit of information has it has the team worked well together so far with with five cars being the biggest team on the grid yeah honestly it's been it's been great from my standpoint i couldn't feel any different a part of now the meetings obviously being a bit longer because you need to yeah uh, listen to another car um but uh honestly i haven't seen any difference um we just have another uh holder at the track we just have more space yeah. we have more people but uh, I haven't seen that, I don't know, that things are slower or things are worse. Um, I don't know if probably from a mechanic standpoint it might be tougher or easier. I don't know. Um, but um, I cannot see any difference. And in fact, I think it's, you know, more cars is more data. Um, and with having a thermal, for example, it doesn't make a difference because there's so much track time. Um, but when you go to St. Pete, um, you get an extra car worth of data for the two practices before you're heading to qualifying and you might have i don't know some valuable lessons from from that extra car you always have so i think it's been great um it's been great also that we have uh two new drivers that never tested our car and linus tested another car so he has a different mindset of what an indy car should be and i think that's good because whenever you bring somebody from outside uh he can tell you, hey, you have this issue um, because maybe I've been four years with the same issue and I got used to it and we there's ways to make it better. So um, I think that's been great. And yeah, so far it's been it's been helpful for sure. So the weekend in thermal overall, I think very new. Um, there's there's a lot of differing opinions on, on what people think of it. I, I think I, you know, I, I found a lot of good things from it. I do believe there are a lot of people like Christian Lungard said that his team wouldn't show up next year if they were invited. So I was like, okay, well, there's oh. a, that was okay. a wild quote. Yeah. Like I, that yeah. was, that was in the newspaper. Uh, so there, there's a lot of, I guess, differing thoughts. Like, can you tell us what you think was good about the weekend and what you think maybe, Hey, like let, let's rethink this because again, I love that we are doing something like this because I do think that, if we didn't have a race, right, there'd be a, a huge gap between St. Pete yep. and Long Beach. We have an opportunity to do something new. Now, again, our spect- like obviously not a big spectator event. So there's a cu- there, there's obviously many ways to see it. And there are several things that I don't like about, which I've talked about in this episode you know, already. But give us something you think that maybe we can look at for improvement maybe for next time. Or, or is, does it need to be at a different track? Like, I... I don't know. I love the idea of having a big prize for the guys that go out there and put it all on the line. I, I love that, and I think that there was some racing that I've watched enough IndyCar racing in my life to know, you know, 
sometimes you just kind of you you take the points when you got it. But the, you know, Alex Rossi, Newgarden, those guys were going at it like like it was the championship race, and like they were rubbing on each other's yeah. cars. And I was like, okay, this is this this is exciting. And 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 so so I I don't know what you thought about that. I wanted to get someone else's opinion who was participating. Well, I would say that um, I'm really really happy that we tried something new. That's what drivers yes. we always say. Like at the meetings, we say, please, can we try something new? Because we want, we have a great product, but we know we can make it better. So let's try something new. And they did. Very new. Completely new. Yes. And obviously not everything was amazing. I mean, um, you always want to say, oh, well, why did you do the qualifying like that? Then instead of doing this, but that's how we progress and maybe come up with an amazing product next year or in two years or in five. So I'm really happy that we did that. Um, but once it's done, it's super easy to just look back and say, hey, uh, we could uh, change the timing. We could change the length of the race or we could change the how everything works. So, um, yeah, I, I think there was a lot of positives and there's a lot of things that I would change. Uh, for example, um, I think some people and some teams don't like it because of the timing, because everybody's on the championship mindset. We came out of St. Pete and suddenly you put this race that it's completely new, um, that we get so much data, but at the same time, we don't race enough um, and you don't give us points. It's like, do I need to take it seriously, like completely, or do I need to relax a little bit? Um, I think if we would have done this race as a first race in like beginning of February to get the test, to get the fans excited, to get everybody to... Um, I don't know, be on track and to get all the teams together, that would have been amazing. No points, just money, just fun, uh, more TV stuff and blah, 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 blah. Um, but we've done it on the second race. Maybe it's not ideal. Um, the hits, now we know that it was not the best way, but um, I think that we there's ways that we can make it happen. I don't know, like eliminate the last car every lap. Like the last car. That was a theory every that lap, people talked about, yes. Yeah, just eliminate it. Um, give us a pit stop. Why not? Like, I think it's exciting. You get the crews to work. You get the strategies going on. Um, so I think there's a lot of stuff that could be a lot better. Um, don't do a half time or do a half time with something exciting. I don't know. Like, there's a lot of stuff that uh, we can do better, but we can do better because we tried something new. So I think that's a positive. Um, I know lots of people just like to complain and complain, which is great. I mean, yes. yeah, that's still it's, why it's, it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy to run a series, and I complain a lot um, as well. Like For I'm not drivers, the guy that's built in. Yes. That's built into us. Yeah, we like to complain, um, yeah. but I think it was great to try. I think it's great to keep it. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe change a couple of stuff, and for sure change it on the calendar. Do it in December where there's nothing going on. Do it in January or February, like to get everything started and give us more races like now we should be racing for points like the money's great i i'm happy it's gonna help me the team and everybody but that would change the money for the points right now like i wouldn't uh yeah. have any doubt um because that's what we want to do but um anyway that's that's my little takeaway no, I, I appreciate that, honestly, because I think you, you bring up a lot of good points. We've talked about it. Now, again, this this interview plays after we played most of the show where I'm going to get I, – I got into a lot of stuff. But, uh, Chase, if you – like, you got anything else here for, for Alex? Yeah. Um, I mean, so a lot, obviously a lot of people were talking about the money, man. You went out there. You got it done for the money. Uh, did you put it all on black? That's the question. <laughs> did you go – did you put it all on black? Never. Yeah, I would never do that. Okay. Diapers? Red? Diapers, new house, baby, pajamas, a lot of stuff, man. There's so much going on. <laughs> there, that's you know, a good a lot dad of people right said there. Real estate. A lot of people said real estate. Alex is out here getting a house. That's good. That's smart. yeah, it's good. I mean, it's, uh, appliances. Uh, it's a lot of work, man, and it's a lot of money. So, um, yeah, the the issues now that I I'll, I'll go bigger with the house and bigger with everything. But um, yeah, it's it's good. It's good stuff for sure. <laughs> Heck yeah. I love that. Getting a good push of investment. And I love what you said too about, you know, starting it out in the beginning of the season. I think personally, like that's where I'm at on it. And we, we've discussed it all, like Connor said, but it's, it's one of those deals where it's a huge stepping stone, right? Like these are the kind of ways uh, that, that we want to see IndyCar continue to grow and 
and it gets people thinking. And that's what we really need right now is ideas. The more ideas we can bring to the table, the better we can make the product. And then that's how we get to the moon. So I yep. love it. I agree. So real quick. So now you guys have, I believe there's a hybrid test for some of the other teams that did not get to run the hybrids. Is that right? The next couple of weeks are essentially a little bit of time off until we get to the indie test. Can you give us a rundown of what the next couple of weeks look like kind of going towards Long Beach? Yeah, we're not doing any hybrid tests, obviously. Um, but uh, like tonight, I'm flying to Texas to do the rookie test with Kiffin, which he's oh, yes. getting his uh, rookie test at the Oval, which is great. Um, whereas we're doing the in the open test in, uh, there, in two weeks. Dog, yeah. You'll be there. You'll be there. Yeah. We'll be. I'll be like chasing you. Um, Locked in. Shark him. <laughs> where else? This is exciting. I, I the open test is one of the best moments and the worst at the same time because you've been preparing. You go to the track and you don't know. Oh, are we too fast because we everybody's hiding, or are we slow? Because, too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I don't know. Like it's, um, I don't know. It's it's always exciting. We have two days, which is a lot of running, and we can test a lot of crazy ideas and get to run a little bit in group, which is what we like. Um, and then straight to Long Beach. Um, I mean, we have a, a long break. I, I would prefer to go this weekend and and race, but it's fine. Um, because once Long Beach starts, it's nonstop. It's nonstop, baby. Um, and I oh, had yeah. uh, Le Mans in between all those races so love that once i do uh long beach i'll be yeah gone for for a long time on the road dad yeah <laughs> yeah i mean yep. I'll, I'll take i'll take i'll take the girls uh on on some races that are close but yeah of course i have one more question which i thought was interesting when you're leading the final and they immediately, t did they tell you that Colton is doing 20 seconds slower and he's just out there pounding around at the back, saving his tires? Like, when did that, because I noticed the pace. I was watching the pace. You're obviously leading, so you're going. Like, we're, we're going to lead this race. We're going to try to beat all the rest of these guys by as much as possible. But was how early did the communication start between your team and be like, hey, just letting you know, like, half the field has dropped off 40 seconds. And there are some people pounding around doing two minute lap times like what, what did they let you know that because i noticed you're i mean you were fast enough to do the same lap times for the entire race essentially and no one had any chance but did you start to think about it was it like all right i because I, you did back off the pace you did back off a yeah. little bit as other people backed off when did that kind of kick in um we knew before the race like if you are not in the top i would say six or eight you had to do something like that because otherwise there's no chance. Strategy. Um, there's uh, that was the only strategy you could play because you know there's gonna be this uh, red flag or this yellow or this halftime, so you're gonna gain back all the seconds that you can take care of the tire. So I know that some people didn't like, but they were playing with the rules that we had, so they did amazing. exactly like they did what they had to do. I would have done exactly the same. Um, we knew that was gonna happen, so. I started pushing the first lap to try and, I mean, the best place to be was P1 and try and manage from there. So I started pushing. And when I saw that McLaughlin was second and started to take care of his tires, I was like, all right, if you do that, I'll, I'll do the same. So we kept on going uh, slower. And I, I think that actually from the first lap to the last lap of the first half, um, we went four seconds slower. So we were just like Crazy, yeah. taking care of the tires a ton. Um, and then, yeah, Colton was going, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds slower, but he was going to start 12th or 10th. Like, he had to make an, a crazy start and then try and get to us. I knew that we had still good tires to try and go fast and just try and uh, get our into our rhythm. And we actually did. Everything worked perfectly. I was able to take care of the tires during the first 10 laps. And then... Um, I actually took care of the tires a little bit during the second uh, uh, part of the race because, I mean, 10 laps at thermal, it's it's a long way. Like, That's tough. you cannot yeah, yeah. say, yeah, you cannot say it's a sprint. It's it's like a, a more than half of a stint on, on some other tracks. So, um, yeah, once I saw that my tires were going to handle, I just started going. Um, I saw that we had a lot of pace, like, all weekend. So it was it was good to stay up there. Yeah, it just must have been interesting. Like I, I, I looked at it, and I'm like, as soon as I saw the start and Colton's backing off, I'm like, 
yes, like this is going to be hilarious to see like what happens in the second half. Because again, you play the strategy exactly. that you have. That was the only yes. option. And it's a gamble, so you do it. Like it, it's the same reason why people, you know, pit lap four at St. Pete. Sometimes they try to do exactly. a major undercut. Like you're like, what the heck? That's are those what guys they doing? have to do. That's what it they have work. to do. Yes, yeah, and that's yeah. what they had to do with the position they they were in. Like you're not gonna overtake ten cars running at full speed during ten laps. Like that, there that doesn't work with the same amount of tires. But you could overtake ten cars. He actually overtook eight cars. Um, yeah. with better tires and he was flying. Um, so they did, they did well. I know that some people didn't like, and they were like, oh, they are playing I like dirty. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, that, that, these are the rules. How can you change that? Well, if we add in that we eliminate one car, it's lab, then that's not going to happen. But, yeah. um, they were playing as, as I would have done. Yeah, I, I, you see in, in, in at St. Pete, any other normal race, right? You're going to have a whole first stint where there might be some passing on the first lap, but you're going to settle in for 28, 30 laps, and there's not yeah. really much passing at all. When you look at a 10-lap segment at Thermal, I think there was more passing in that second 10-lap segment than there was in the entire first segment of St. Pete. It's just yeah. it's just kind of thinking about what, what it looks like, you know what I mean? So I, I hope that we find some improvements to it, but Alex, congratulations. Thank uh, you. Great to see you get all that money. And you did great donuts afterwards, too. As I appreciated the burnout. Sure. There was a nice little drift. Nice drift. Yeah. I saw it right in front but of the you know, There was a lot of sand and there was no I know. grip. But then there was a lot of grip in some patches. And I almost went uh, to, to how you say, to the stones. And I was like, oh, my God, no, no, no. Um, but I saw that. Dude. that was good. It's like, don't yeah, go in the stones. Don't go in the stones. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. But the thing was, it was really tough to do donuts there. I'm sorry there was no smoke, but it's because there was no grip. But it's okay. I tried. Uh, the team was not super happy about the donuts because this is our race engine. But it was a win. That's okay. And you yeah. never know when it's going to be the next win, so I had to celebrate. You got to share it out, dude. To hear. I love that. All right, Alex. Yeah. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being on this show. I am sure that we will get to talk to you probably many other times during this season. I and hope I look so. forward to it. Uh, and we'll see you at the Indy Test, my friend. Thank you so much, guys. It was it was a pleasure. And pleasure to meet you, Chase. Same to you, brother. Take care. Let's go. Well, there you have it, folks. The winner. He is a wealthier man now. Uh, a lot of people said he might have uh, legal bills to pay off, which is kind of funny. A lot of good memes about that. Uh, but Alex, <laughs> either way, he's, uh, he's a wealthier man now. Uh, good to hear he's going to buy some diapers and, uh, and invest in some property, but, uh, really Great enjoy dad. chatting with Alex. I like Alex a lot. Um, he is someone who I've, who I've got to know way more than, than when he first got into the series. I didn't talk to him at all. Didn't really know the guy. And now we, we have the same trainer. Uh, we play a lot of video games together before we had a child. Um, so, uh, so yeah, great guy, uh, great representative for our sport. Um, and yeah, what'd you think, Chase? No, I thought it was good. I mean, he's a, he's an upbeat dude, man. And like, he, you can tell he's got that, he's got that drive. He got that beeline drive. Um, and yeah, I just, I, I still, I didn't get to bring it up, but I still, uh, think that I could beat you and him in horse on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. I did mention okay. that over the weekend. So I'd like to challenge, Fair. I'm going to find a way to challenge y'all at some point. Fair. Um, so yeah, there there was a couple other things in the race uh, that that we didn't really get to next week or this this week, but uh, obviously next week we don't have a a race to preview, so we can get into some more. Uh, you know, I've got to fly back home to Indianapolis uh, here this this afternoon, this evening, so uh, I've got to get myself to the airport here at some point soon. Um, but uh, there's a couple things that we're going to get to probably next week. I really want to talk about maybe uh, the reason why Pietro was DQ'd from the race. Uh, a couple things that Christian Lundgaard said that we talked about with uh, with Alex Pillow there a little bit. A couple more quotes, um, but we're going to spread this out. We got uh, we got we got a, we got another great show next week. Uh, maybe have an Indy NXT driver or another IndyCar driver. Uh, we'll figure out how we can do that. Um, and and there there's just there, there's a lot to talk about. Thankfully, we have a great series that we can talk about. Maybe uh, even though there was a lot of craziness and a lot of negativity, there were a lot of people talking about IndyCar, so maybe that's helpful. I don't know, and EPR is good PR. I don't know if that really plays out in this one, but but we'll see. Um, so, yeah, so we got a lot to talk about uh, next week as well. Uh, but before we, uh, we finish off the show, we are going to get to a great segment that if you're not familiar with this show, 
Uh, I actually just introduced David Land to this part of the show uh, recently. He did a YouTube video with me, so we appreciate the new subscribers on YouTube. Thanks to David. Um, but the, ran- the Ricky Treadway Random Indy 500 Driver of the Week right now. The greatest event of its kind that's ever been run on. Let's meet the drivers. We'll make up the field. All right, folks. This this week, we went old school. We kind of found someone, again, interesting. Interesting because there's not a lot of words about this human being here. Um, And the name kind of goes with our segment. So we went all the way back to the 1929 Indianapolis 500. The 1929 Indianapolis 500 uh, was won by Ray Keach. Ray Keach won. Uh, and I went with the random Indy 500 driver by the name of Rick Decker. Rick Decker, Ricky Shredway, random Indy 500 driver of the week. Rick Decker finished 23rd. Now, this was kind of an interesting one. Rick Decker's real name is Rick Liffle. Rick Liffle Merle Decker. <laughs> now, Dick Decker. <laughs> Rick Liffle. So Rick Liffle obviously had to shorten that one up to Rick Decker. Uh, born in Staten Island, New York, and a New York man. Um, and oh, uh, yeah. he basically did, it looks like, four Indianapolis 500s. Uh, only finished, didn't finish any of them, but uh, finished 23rd, 37th, 41st, and 27th. So these in, this is in the years where there was more than 33 cars, uh, it looks like. But, uh, but yeah, didn't finish a single race. Uh, retired from four of his Indy 500s from 1929 to 1934. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of wild. Rick Liffle. Rick Liffle Merle Decker. Died in 1966, age 62. <laughs> yeah. I, he that's probably kinda didn't run anymore because he probably went into bikes, and that's probably like Brian D. Like, like, uh, like, like, uh, what, Natalie Decker's, uh, yeah, like, maybe, great, is this great, Natalie great, Decker's? great grandpa. Yeah, is this Natalie Decker's Possibly. great-grandfather? We don't know. Yeah, we don't Dick know. Decker. That's what I like. To, like, that's a great nickname. Good to call. Um, I think that he would, I think that, you know, like that, that's the story I'd want to go with if I if go. I didn't have anything else. Like, he just. Potential you know, distant relative to Natalie Decker at NASCAR x Correct. Who knows? We'll have to <laughs> ask her about it. We will. Anyway, yeah. that was. Uh, that was this week's random Indy 500 driver of the week. Really interesting. Rick Liffle, Merle Decker. Uh, R.I.P. Rick. Uh, but respect uh, the fact that you showed up for four Indy 500s in the uh, early time of uh, the United States of America. Well, they're in the 20s. Uh, it's a wild time to be alive. Um, so anyway, yeah, man. appreciate you folks for listening to this show. Um, you know, I, th- I think a lot of people might have been just switched onto this show thanks to a couple different content pieces that we did over the weekend. Uh, really appreciate you guys. Really appreciate everyone's feedback. Uh, and, and even those who uh, decided that they hated me, uh, I hope that maybe I could regain some of that respect. Uh, I, I understand that I probably made a, a, a not a great quote. But, hey, normally I try to be a great quote guy. So this is a, this is the first one in a long time where I'm like, you know what, that was, man, it's not a great way to look. Uh, and I got to talk to Nathan Brown about that too. He's been great to me, but uh, that probably wasn't the greatest situation. So uh, no no fault to him. He's just doing his job. Um, He's but, report uh, we appreciate, torn, baby. Yeah, we appreciate you guys. Um, please uh, follow along. Please leave us a rating. Please like the show. Please share it with someone. Be a friend. Tell a friend, as they say. Uh, leave us uh, leave us a rating on the the podcast platform rating system, uh, and, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. We got a ton of subscribers over the weekend, so thankfully, we'll, hopefully, we'll have some new folks. Uh, appreciate you guys watching. Appreciate you guys listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Hey everyone, Connor Daly here. Please leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. And also subscribe to the channel as well. That would be very helpful. Be a friend, tell a friend. Thank you so much for the support. And we'll see you on the next episode of Speed Street.